guys, this is Edna with Squire Photography and today I'm going to teach you how to make a puzzle feed on Instagram. This is a little bit higher tech than some of the other stuff that I've taught you, but if you are kind of familiar with Photoshop, you shouldn't have too bad of a time. The first time I did this, it did take me a few hours because I just needed to set up kind of the look and the branding and the style that I wanted to go with. But now that I have that down, this should go a lot easier. Wish me good luck. All right, guys. So the first thing that I did was I looked up what is the ideal photo size for Instagram. And I guess right now it's 1080 by 1080. So here is a grid of a bunch of 1080 by 1080s. Obviously, this is to mimic Instagram. We have three across going all the way up. And this is a week's worth. So it's eight tiles up. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. These seven are the things that are going into my Instagram feed. And this is to set up for the week after. Because you're going to need, obviously, you're going to need to set up an additional day so that you have like this little piece hanging out and this piece here. So I've already set up week day one, and then I'm going to set up seven more days for the following week. So this is how it goes, guys. This is um, also available in a much easier form. I believe that you can watch YouTube videos on how to do this on Canva, which is a phone app. But if you want to make your own unique piece, then I suggest you do it in Photoshop. If you're a photographer, this shouldn't be too difficult for you because you're a photographer and you should know how to do these basic things anyways. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to remove what I already have here and I'm going to start with my next weeks. So again, these are 1080 by 1080 squares. I made three 1080 squares across and I made eight above and obviously I just, I did three times 1080 and made this uh, that uh, that across and then 8 times 1080 and made it up above and I'm going to try to I'm going to try to download this and put it on my website and have a link for you guys so that you can just download the uh, template so here we go the first thing I'm going to do is I am going to take all of these layers and I'm going to delete all of these so that's all this is the only layer that I want right now and here you can see on the left hand side that I have all of this right here and this is this so I'm gonna take this and I am going to move it down below so I'm gonna press control I'm gonna highlight all of these that are already there and I'm gonna press control T and I'm gonna move this down to where it was before, which is right there. Right there. I'm going to double check it. That was a little bit over. And a little bit up. So, right there. All right. Okay guys, so the first thing I'm going to do now is I'm going to start filling in this area with what I want. And right now the way I've got it going is I've got motivational quotes here in a checkerboard. And I've got photographs in the other checkerboards. And I this is something that I would suggest that you guys do. I have this file called, I, I use temp1 because I have an action where I've where I automatically put watermarks on my photographs. So every single time that I have a photo shoot I add a watermark to the photo shoot automatically and I send it through an action to this folder and then every few weeks or every couple of months I put them in their designated folders and inside of those I usually have people's contract so for instance these are just a couple of hints and tips for you guys it'll make your life a lot easier um, here I have Margaret and Twan's, Twan's wedding uh, these are the images that I watermarked for their wedding. And then I have their timelines and their um, contracts. And all of the contracts have the information like who was their florist, who was their baker. This was from 
uh, New Orleans, so I'm not as super interested in tagging everybody because I'm from Orange County, California. But you get the idea. If you keep your copy of your contract, just a copy of it, inside of this folder, you'll be able to grab the information quickly. So here I have another one. This is the next wording that I'm going to put up right now, this really fun LARP wording, and here's their contract. And that's how you'll be able to tag everyone when you are actually putting this into Instagram. So through my temp one folder right now, I just shot this wedding this weekend. So I'm going to add these photos to my temp folder and I'm going to use one of them to add here. And then I'm going to make this into a carousel because I think I loved all of the images. So now I'm going to show you how I've been doing my collage. So here are all of the little graphic and design elements that I'm using for my collage. And here is how we're going to do it. So the next piece here is going to be a photograph and then another photograph here and another photograph here. But I like all of these like cool background things. So it's not just a creamy background. This is a slightly off white background, which is part of my branding color. So I'll show you guys my branding colors. This is my branding board. And you can see here that I use all of these colors as part of my Instagram look, right? So I can use these papers, I can use these colors, I can use these logos. These are my two kind of fonts that I use, although right now with the little motivational um, memes that I'm adding, I'm allowing any font just to give it a, a little shake up so people see something different. These are different papers that I can use. Um, so this is kind of the color scheme that I'm trying to keep it to. So it's a good idea if you've made a little marketing board just to keep it off to the side so that you have it so that in case you need to use a color or you want to use one of your papers or whatever they're there but I'm allowing a whole bunch of different kind of fun cool stuff for this so this is what I'm doing I'm gonna take this and I, oh, I downloaded most of this from Sh Shutterstock now a shout out to my cousin Brenda who allows me to use her Shutterstock account so um, here is um, one of the papers that I'm using one of the little scraps of paper that I'm kind of using so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna press W and that's the quick selection tool okay so we're going to do the quick selection tool and I'm going to take this piece of paper right here and I'm just pressing, I'm right clicking and I'm just sort of highlighting this area and it's really good about being able to find the edges of the paper. So you see here, and that's good enough. It doesn't have to be perfect guys. So I'm going to press control copy and I'm going to throw it into my Instagram account. I'm going to press control V and I kind of want this in the background, right? So I'm going to drop it into the background. And I'm going to just transform it so there's edges that come out and there's edges that are in all the different spots here. And this, you see how it's just taking up like a few different edges. So taking up a little bit of this square, a little bit of this square, some of this square. It's not just on the one square I'm working on right now. Now I'm going to add a photograph to this. So I'm going to my temp one folder where all my photographs are and I'm going to use one of the wedding images that I shot this weekend, ah, which is my favorite. I'm going to have to say that this is my favorite image from that day. So I'm going to take it. This is an already watermarked image and it's actually already resized. It's pretty small. It's a pretty small resize. So I'm going to take this image and I'm going to copy it and I'm going to paste it into my collage and you see how it's kind of already resized all of my images are already kind of resized so I'm going to put it right here but I want it to be obviously on some of the edges so I'm gonna make it just a tad bigger and I'm gonna do something like this right just like this and you kind of want to be looking at the rest of it so if you have this one tilted to the left you don't want all of them tilted to the left. I would go to the right then a little bit. And there we go. Now I'm going to teach you how to make some of these little um, borders, these little edges. And I actually already have a, a watermark made for the edges. Right here you can see it says um, new border for album smaller. Nope it's this one down here. Instagram collage to separate vintage border Instagram. So I'm going to show you that. You see how that came up automatically?
because I already made an action. But I'm going to show you how to make it from the beginning, okay? So you're going to click on your picture and you're going to go to FX right here. This is in your layers palette, okay? In your layers palette, you're going to go to FX and you are going to add an outer glow, or sorry, I'm sorry, it's an inner glow. And I, because I'm going with a kind of a vintage theme, I don't want my inner glow to be very bright white. I'm going to go here and I'm going to go to normal and I'm going to go to opacity 100 and I'm going to go with a 100% choke and this is the size so here I want precise instead of softer and here is the size see how you can make it thick or thin so I want it kind of not too thick not too thin but I want the color to be kind of a creamy milky white instead of a bright bright white okay just like that that's how I want it. So now that I've got that, I'm going to add a little drop shadows. You can see everything here is drop shadowed to the left as if my light was coming from the upper right hand corner. Everything is dropping. All the shadows are dropping to the left. I'm going to zoom in so you can see that a little bit. So watch this. See how these shadows are here to the left? and the shadow is here to the left. Now I can just copy that and paste it just so you guys know, for instance, this is already what I want, right? This one already has it. So I can literally just click on this, right click on this bottom area and press copy layer style and then go here to your photograph, right click on the image and press paste layer style, okay? You can do that. But if you wanted to make it from scratch, no problem, we're doing that right now. We're pressing FX and now we're going into drop shadow. And here we're going to press normal. We're going to add a black. So click black. The angle I told you is from the top right hand corner. So you can move this like this, right? And you can see the shadows can, the shadows are going to change depending on where the light is coming from. And then you can add a, see here where it shows you the distance. Look at this. This is the distance. And we're going to have just a small distance away from the photograph. And then the spread is how, how, how defined the line is, or how soft the line is, and then the size. Again, it just softens it and makes it larger or smaller. So I'm going to go with that. I think that looks really pretty. I'm going to press OK. Now again, I could have just copied and pasted the other one and that would have been fine too, but I'm teaching you how to do this from the beginning. Okay, so that gives me that photograph. I think it looks really cute. I'm going to bring this photograph up on my layers palette. So I'm going to grab that layer and I'm going to bring it up just like this. And now this is going to have one of these, one of these uh, motivational memes. So I'm going to show you how to do that super easily. Right here, I went to Pinterest and I looked up motivation with white background. So let's look through all of these. I really like this one. You will never influence the world by being just like it, right? This is really nice. Yeah, I don't see it here, but we can actually take just that one. I'm looking for something with a little bit higher resolution. So let's see. Hey Warrior, keep going. I like that. I like that. Oh, here's a whole bunch of memes. All right. So let's start with this one here. I am going to take my little snippet tool and I'm going to press new and I'm going to snip this area right here and I'm going to save it. I'm going to go to here. This is where I have all my Instagram stuff. And I'm going to go motivation one. All right, so we have one. And here's motivation two. I'm going to do another one.
and you want to collect a bunch of them but it's best if you use a white background and I'm going to show you why if you can go to the to the actual web nope that is not a website we want to go to <laughs> if you can go to the website and get a higher resolution that's awesome you can give credit you can do whatever you want here oops So I'm going to teach you how to do this here. All right. So here I'm going to use another one of those cool pieces of paper. Right. Let's do, um, I like these, the small vintage. Now, I will tell you guys that I went to Shutterstock and I got all of these cool different things. And some of them were separated in vector images. And I was able to separate them in Adobe Illustrator. But Adobe Illustrator is a whole nother thing. Another thing that you can do is you can take these all and separate them each one by one, right? So take the W, copy it, and then paste it. And now you have this as a separate layer, right? So you can have this as a separate layer. And that's what I did for all of these. I made these all already ready to be used. And this already took me a good hour just to do all of these. I separated all of these and I made a PSD file. I always have a JPEG and a PSD. So this is old paper stacked. And this is what it looks like separated. So this was the one with the original background, which was a white background. I separated by removing the white background and now I have it all by itself. So let's take this one, for instance, and drop it right into here. Okay, I'm gonna close this, and I'm gonna press Control T, again, press Shift, and then grab that corner and drag it, just like this. And again, we want we want to show a little bit of the photograph from before and this photograph and just like this and now I'm gonna put my motivational meme in here and I'm gonna show you how easy this is where did we leave these motivational memes here it is let's do this one right here I'm gonna drag it and drop it and I'm gonna expand it press enter control T so it's where you want it I'm gonna sharpen it a little bit you can literally make these yourself these motivation motivational memes but I just don't have that kind of time to make a whole bunch of motivational memes so if you have one that's like really low resolution like that delete it and use something else you know what let's go to white background motivation motivational quotes we can go to settings tools here and that's where are we settings more where is it images sorry here we go let's go with size so you go to images tools size let's go to medium here we go that's a little bit better Not super high res. Five seventy by five twenty four is a little bit better. It'll probably look better. So try to find things that are a little higher resolution. And start kind of collecting them. Or you can make your own. Or you can literally just type it in. So I mean, just to give you an idea, but I want to show you how to do this really quickly because if you do find something pretty nice, um, let's try large. See, a lot of these are, oh, that one's pretty nice. All right, here we go. We'll use motivational three here. 
All right, we'll drop it in. It's a much bigger file, looks a little bit better. We're gonna go like this. So that's gonna be where it will be. And now we're just gonna go to, nor right here under layers, where it says normal, you're gonna go to light, sorry, darken. You're gonna go to darken. And that's how easy it is, guys, just like that. You just go right under layers, and where it says normal, you're going to click darken, but you have to have a light or white background or your background. This background has to be darker than the background that you choose. And it'll take the darker part of that image and put it on your background. So it's super easy to do, but you can of course use your text tool and just do it yourself. And I'll show you that next. It's super easy. Now we're going to put another photograph here on this side. Again, I want to put like a cool little background on there so we're going to go to our backgrounds again and this time I'm going to take uh, one of these pieces of paper. Some of them aren't separated from their backgrounds because they were so easy just to press W and grab it just like this. Press copy and paste. Now everything you have to remember to put to put um, a shadow on everything, guys. Don't forget. I'm going to put it here. So we're going to go to this photograph. We're going to copy the layer style. We're going to paste it on this, which we forgot to paste, but without the inner glow, okay? So no inner glow, just the shadow. And then we're going to copy that one, copy layer style, grab this piece of paper, right? And then press on the layer, paste layer style. So now you have a little shadow there. And we're going to do another photograph. So let's go to temp one again and pick another photo. So we already did the wedding. Where were we? We were here, the LARP wedding. And I totally think that this is such a cute photo. This actually, when I posted it last on Instagram, got tons of likes and comments. So I'm gonna use the same one, even though I love this picture with the knight and his guys just sort of in the background and the shadows, I love that. But because this got so many likes, I'm going to drop it in because really it's about trying to get people to, you know, look at your page and get that algorithm, Instagram algorithm going. So I'm going to drop that in. So here's the photo and I'm going to use one of my little backgrounds, uh, the little frames. So let's do this one, Shutterstock uh, 1560, this one I'm going to show you, I'm going to open the file and show you what it is. All right, you see how it's just a scalloped edge? That's all it is. So I'm gonna drop it in just like this. I'm gonna close this, I'm gonna transform this, put it where I want the photograph to go. I think this would be good right there. And then we're gonna drop this picture behind the scalloped edge, right? So here's our scalloped edge. Here's our photo. It's going to go right in here. Let's press control T and it goes in the frame just like that. You can zoom in. Again, press shift then control T and then just move those corners. I think that looks pretty good. And I'm going to cut a little bit of this corner off. You can see. No, you know what? There we go. Now nothing is showing. Okay. So now I'm going to add the um, shadow on this one also. But you need to you need to grab both of these layers, the photo and the background, the scalloped edge, and you need to merge them. So grab both of them. Press control and grab your photo and press, you know, just hold your control 
and press the scalloped edge and press Control E on your keyboard and that merges those two items so then we can just add the layer right just the shadow because that's what we've been adding so there's the next one I like that that's starting to look really nice and now I'm going to add a motivational quote here now I'll show you how to do it just with text so let's add another cute little piece of paper here I like these so let's close some of the stuff we're working with here all right so I'm going to do a little quote on oh I like this right here this piece I'm going to paste it here. There we go. That's pretty cool. So now we can just type in a quote. What was one of the quotes that we liked? You can look up any quote you want. Uh, we use choose joy so we can remove that I think I'm putting those somewhere let's see Oop, I'm gonna delete it uh, never give up because great things take time okay I like that so we'll take our text tool never give up because great things take time. Okay, press Control T, grab it, transform it, put it right inside of there, and there you go. That's another one, just like that. You can use any script, any type, anything you want. Go to um, defont.com and pick up all the free fonts you want. Uh, there's so many different free font sites so I have that one up that one will do I like that they're a little bit different so there's one and I'm gonna close this one up and we are going to add another piece of paper in the background oh. so let's take this and let's do I like this one here just going to copy this part of this page and paste it and I'm going to put it in the background so that goes all the way down at the bottom of the layers here all the way down Again, we're always watching out that we have extra stuff just kind of hanging out on a bunch of different squares because that's what gives the whole puzzle look its cool feel, you know, that this is hanging out on this photo in this little corner and, you know, and you can have part of photographs coming into different areas. Mm -hmm. That's what makes it look so awesome. So, and again, we're going to add a, a shadow to this. So, paste layer style. Oh, it doesn't even show because it's on this side. So, all right. So it's time for a photograph. So I'm what I've been trying to do is go through my photo shoots and pick photos from recent things because I'm really bad about that. So where's the 10th one? Here we go. So we did this one. Now we're going to do this one. And which photo do I, I love this photo, but I really love this photo. I think it's a lot of fun. I like that photo too. But I'm going to do this one because it's really fun. So I'm going to drop it right into here. And let's put a cool edge on it. Let's go to our Instagram collages and let's do one of these. So I have a whole bunch of these vintage frames. You can do any style that you want. You notice here how all my frames are separate, plus I have masks on top of them. So I'm going to do this one right here. I'm going to press V, and I'm going to do this one. And I already have them locked. So when I drop them into Photoshop, 
you'll see what I mean. Where are they? There we go. All right, I'm gonna close this up. Now here I have a mask on top of, let me show you. So here are the two files. This is a mask and this is the actual frame. So I have both of them locked. The layer mask is where I'm gonna clip my photograph into. So I'm gonna take these two, transform it, put it where I want it. Let's do here. Oh, I like that. And I like it in the background like that. I think it looks really neat. Right there. Now this black layer mask just this black layer mask. I just made a, a rect rectangle that goes on top of this. And this is the black clipping mask. And this is where I'm going to drop this photo on top of. So here's my photo. I'm going to drop it on top of the black clipping mask, just like this. And I'm going to press Control Alt G. And now that clips it to the bottom layer where that, where that, um, black clipping mask is that's where it's clipping it okay so there you go I think that looks really awesome and we are going to I'm gonna merge these so that I can drop a layer style on it there we go and that's how we're going so far guys so I've taught you how to use these cute little masks and frames and I've taught you that you can um, just go into this uh, like a meme, motivational meme, use one with a white background and go into layers and press darken. You can also just use text. You can just copy and paste any different um, backgrounds and background colors and do anything that you want. You can make it as cute, you can make it shabby, you can make it anything or any color that you want. You can make your background a different color. You don't have to use papers, you can just use photos. You can do anything that you want, guys. I'm going to show you some samples of Instagram puzzle feeds. And just so you see that there are so many different ways to do this. Like here's a puzzle feed right here here's another puzzle feed here and I love this pinks and splashes and splatters it's super cute here's another one here but they all sort of have the same kind of feeling you want to just sort of have elements that come into each other so that it gives it that puzzle feel feel right that's the whole thing that's what it's all about is seeing these edges bump into one another and then cutting them off so what I'm gonna do guys is I'm gonna finish the rest of this and you know what let me show you really quickly how I made these little layer masks with something like this so I took this shutter stick shutterstock JPEG right here I took this shutter uh, stock JPEG and I removed the white background okay guys so we're gonna go to W and I'm just gonna highlight everything in white it's best to get these in white otherwise it's a pain in the butt right then I'm gonna go to select refine edge and I'm gonna use smart radius I'm just gonna bump that up oh sorry guys I always forget this press shift control control shift I to do the Sorry, control alt I. Nope. Inverse. There it is. Shift control I to inverse it so that it's in the photograph, not on the white. Okay? I like I highlight I grabbed the white, but I inversed it so that's in the photograph. Okay? Now we're gonna go to select, refine edge, and here it's already pretty well refined, but I'm gonna bring it in a little I'm gonna shift the edge in a little bit. I'm going to go to Smart Radius, and I'm going to shift the edge over a little bit. See how it's removing? Watch this. If I didn't have this, if I had it on zero, look at this right side. See how that shadow is kind of wanting to come through? Well, that's not going to work for me because my shadows are on the left. Or, of course, I can flip this. But if you shift the edge over, you remove anything on the, the contamination on the edges. 
that looks pretty good to me. Now I'm just going to click on selection. You can select with layer mask, you can do anything, but for me I just need selection right now. And I'm going to press OK. So that is just going to select. Now if you can zoom in, you can see it's in a little bit more. Do you see that? So I'm going to zoom in. I'm going to copy this layer. So there's two layers. So I'm going to delete this layer. And I'm going to make a new layer so that there's just an empty layer now. And I'm going to go back to the front layer, that background layer, and I'm going to press delete. Oops, sorry. Shift Control I so that the marching ants are outside. And I'm going to press delete. So the whole point is to delete that white background and just to have your image. Okay? So I'm going to press Control D. Now I just have this image. Now what I want to do is I want to create a a clipping mask, right? So if I took a photograph right now, let's just take any picture. I just did this cute photo shoot of this little guy. So if I took this picture and I dropped it in here and I press Control Alt G, do you see how it clips over the whole photograph? But really we just want him in that cute frame, this little frame, we want that to show. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a, you can just press W again, and we're just going to select the black, just the black, just like this. And we're going to make a new layer, and we're going to fill it this fill this new layer with black. So fill is G, and now we've filled it with black. So now, if you unclick on the frame, you'll see it's just a black square click on it back on and you see the whole thing. So you, anytime you want to use a clipping mask, all you have to do is you have to click on that black top layer, right? Just click on that layer that has a black top mask. Go into whatever photograph you want. Here we go. And we're going to drop it in. And now it's already on top of that layer, right? So you're going to press Control alt g done. You press Control t and you can make it smaller or larger, whatever you want. But there you go. It's that easy. So now you know how to make a clipping mask, a layer mask that, that you can clip into. You know how to drop in a photograph. And it's Control alt g to clip it into that black layer mask. Okay, so now you have three layers, the layer that's clipped into the black layer and your background layer. See? And so that's exactly what you're going to do with your Instagram collage. Or you can do everything inside here in the collage. You don't have to do it separately. I mean, you can, right? I can grab this right now, all these three layers, and I can drop it into the Instagram collage and go that route also. You know, but you can do it all inside of the collage image right so I haven't retouched any of these photos or even looked at them but that's the idea alright guys so I'm gonna pause this for now I'm gonna finish up the rest and then I'm gonna come back to you guys and I'm gonna show you how to start removing these little squares and saving them as your Instagram posts Hey guys, this is Edna again, and I took a little break and finished my board, and here it is. I have it all done. It I think it took me like another maybe 20 minutes since I last spoke to you guys. So anyways, here we go. Now I'm going to teach you guys how to make an action to save these into your particular folder that you want to use. So I already have an action made, but I'm going to teach you guys how to make an action. And I'm going to start right here. We're going to go to your actions panel. And I'm going to put this under my favorites area. And we're going to click on this little uh, piece of paper with a little corner on it. And that's a new action. And we're going to name this Instagram... Um, separate Instagram um, IG action new 
All right, I'm going to put that under favorites. And you can even put a function key on it, like F2, F3, F4, like, and that's all you have to press. Right now I have F3 as my save as web. And we're going to record. All right, guys? So here we go. We are recording. And this is the way we do it. We start with the bottom corner on the bottom right-hand side we are going to click on so the first thing that you need to be sure that you have is these little squares okay so the way that you would add these squares is you have to go into view and new guide and you would like here I would put a new guide in the 1080 position vertically and then press OK so that will put a line here and then you add an additional 1080 and then you do another vertical line right so let me just show you guys what that is so 1080 times 2 is 2160 so you would go to view new guide vertical 2160 and press OK and that'll give you this second line and then you do the same thing for all your horizontal lines you start with 1080 add another 1080 add another 1080 to that equation until you have all these lines because we want 1080 squares right and you can also go to edit preferences guides grids and slices and then here I have every like I have a 1080 grid line that's 1080 pixels oh I'm sorry it can't do 1080 so we're gonna do half of 1080 so we're gonna do divided by 2 is 540 so we're gonna do a line every 540 and press OK and so now if you press control H you also have these grid lines right here that might be easier for you guys it's up to you so the, in, these are these four little squares would be one of your squares for Instagram right or again press control H and then do your grid lines either which way you can do your your locking guides or your grid lines whichever way is easiest for you probably for most of you it's going to be easiest to go into preferences and do the guides grids and slices okay I have it done this way it's just easier for me like I said I'm gonna put this somewhere so you guys can download it and it'll come with the grid lines now in order to get the grid lines you would have to press control and I think that's a semicolon right there so there you go you see that and just press that semicolon to go on and off and that's the easiest way to do it another thing you want to make sure that you have is you want to have your snap on so you want to snap to guides grids layers document bounds whatever you don't have to have document bounds but whatever just have them all locked in so that you can ha you can easily grab a square all right so snap to all and now we're gonna grab I'm sorry I'm gonna remove all of this guys from the action because we've been recording and I'm going to record now we're gonna grab this corner right here and it's gonna automatically see how it's automatically just snapping right to the square it's gonna automatically snap to the square so you don't have to be super precise about it so you can click right here and it'll just grab the square and you're gonna press control C sorry guys let's smush all all of our layers together again let me close this off I forgot one important thing So the first thing that we want to do is squish all your layers together. And you can actually have that as part of your action as you want. You know what? Let's add that as part of our action. All right. So here's our action again. And I'm going to record and I'm going to smash my layers together. And there we go. And we are going to start here. Press Control, Control C, Control N. As soon as you press control N, whatever amount of pixels this was, it's going to show up here. Okay? You're going to press OK and you press control V. 
So that's our first one, and then we're going to save it. Shift Control E, that's to squish them together. Shift Control S, and we're going to save them under separate files here. And this is going to be called 001. And it's, we want to save it as a JPEG. And you're going to press save. And we'll save it as 12. Press OK. And then close it. And we're going to do the same thing for all of these. OK? Control C, Control N, Control V. Save as 2. 002. Control W closes it. And next one. Control C. Control N, Control V, and save it. Zero, zero, Alright guys, so we are done with our action. You're going to press stop right here. Now the next time that you make this, all you have to do is run this action and it's going to save all those files and you're going to be able to see them right in the same folder that you wanted them in. So here is my folder and there they are. And these are the images that we're going to throw into Instagram in order. And in the next video, I'm going to show you right coming up how I use Planoli to plan out these images. All right, guys, I'm going to stop this for now, but it's going to take me a couple minutes to get back into Planoli and show you guys how to do that. All right, guys, so here I am in my Planoli. Planoli is not paying me to say this. This is just what I like to use. There are a bunch of different companies that will auto um, post for you, but Planoli is really easy. And uh, you can do the free account. Um, I'll put my referral code down below if anybody wants to try it. I do the whole like seven bucks a month and that allows me to do like a whole bunch of different photos and it auto posts anything horizontal and square. Since these are all square, it auto posts all of them. You see this little um, airplane, paper airplane thing? That means that it's all auto posting so I don't have to worry about anything. All right guys, so here we go. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So I'm going to drop them into my area here on the left where it has all and I'm gonna go one two three so you see it's already populated the first row four and 21 as you can see here it all looks perfect it's ready to go just like that all right and the way that you would schedule it would be you grab this bottom right hand corner one and this is the first one you're going to schedule this will be the second this will be the third so i have it at like four four or five and four ten just in case so i'm going to grab this one the doubt kills uh, more dreams than failure ever will i'm going to drop it into friday the 25th and i'm going to post it at 3 p.m now you can literally type in 3 p.m or you can click here and just click on a time, a date and a time. So let's click on 3.30. And you're going to do your hashtags, anything that you want to write here. And then you're going to click here where it says auto post. Click on that and press save. And I don't know why it's taking so long, but there's the first one. Second one, I'm going to grab this one that's next to it to the left. And I'm going to do this one at 3.35 p.m. 
Again, I like to type it in, but it's up to you. Again, all your hashtags, everything there. And then the next one right here at 3.40 p.m. Again, you can just scroll down and click on 3.45 p.m. Click on Auto Post and press Save. Now, Planoly also has stories that you can add. Um, you can add the multiple images. You can even have like your different hashtags and all you have to do is press copy. So for instance, on these that I have uh, memes, I can click on that on my hashtag, go to entrepreneur, press copy, close it, go to that one and just paste it. And then I can say whatever I want to say in this, you know, doubt. Kills more dreams than failure ever will. And I can give my opinion about all of this and press save. And that's as easy as it is, guys. You have to have Planoly on your phone and on your computer. But as a photographer, it is such a pain to do things from your phone when we have all of our images already retouched on our computer. So you can literally just drop them in here make a cool timeline what you want to do have that cool look and then drop them into your plan only it's really easy to use guys and i highly recommend it again i'll add my referral code below so if you guys decide to give it a shot i would love it if you guys would could use my referral code um you don't have to but that would be awesome and I'll do a little bit more, uh, some more tutorials on how to use Planoly and how I use it and hashtags and Instagram and all that stuff um, coming up soon, hopefully. <laughs> I'm super busy, but all right, guys, this is it for this tutorial. I'm sorry this has taken so long. I'm going to try to condense it while I'm editing the video so that you guys don't have to see all of it because it takes an eternity to do this stuff. But thanks again, guys. Choose happiness. You guys have a great day. Don't forget to like and subscribe. The more that you comment on stuff, the more that um, YouTube will push the algorithm so more people can see this video. So comment anything that you want. Tell me how your day is going. Tell me how you like this. And let me know what videos you guys want to see. I really would love to know what you're really interested in. And I'll try to make videos on that. Talk to you guys soon and have a great day.